money? Yes, you have, Max. How should you know my name? You, you got my wallet. No, your wallet's in your pocket. It's all there, Max. Thirteen dollars in bills. Plus there's four cents in your left vest pocket. Yeah, right. Two pennies in your watch pocket. And a quarter in your cup. The other one. The other side. Who are you? God. <laughs> that was a... It was. With a mustache? It's a long story, Max. Oh, it's on the floor. What's on the floor? The quarter. Well, you, I didn't drop it. You're going to. Oh, excuse me, I'm very nervous. You're trembling, Max. Yeah, you, you bet I'm trembling. Well, don't be ashamed. If I were you and I met me, I would tremble also. I don't believe this whole thing. I'm, I'm still sleeping. I must be dreaming. Look at your watch. Oh, it stopped. I know. That's crazy. It never stops. I wind it a hundred times a day. Put your hand on your heart. Hey. It's not beating. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's bad reading, Max. It should be, oh, understanding. My God, recognition. I'm dead. No, you're not dead, Max. Well, if your heart's not beating, you're dead. You're between heartbeats. How did you get in here? Through the window. The window was locked. Oh, you can't lock out God. Although I must say, Max, you've always tried your best. I don't believe this whole thing is... God? You? Me? You were a kid. Well, would it make it easier for you if I were an old man? When was I born? May 3rd, 1909. Yeah, where? 16 Delancey Street, New York City, apartment 2B. Your Aunt Sophie was a midwife. Yeah, what about my father? His name was Nate. He was 25 at the time of your birth. And my mother? Her name was Fanny. She was 19. Very pretty girl. Lovely soul. When did she die? Well, you haven't seen her in 30 years. Uh, but you have. Oh, yes. Oh, you're beautiful. <laughs> I know how you mean that, but thanks anyway, Max. So God is a second-story man in a white suit, huh? God is many things. Well, there's not a second-story man in a white suit. I love you, Max, but my infinite patience is wearing thin. Look, my wife is going to be home soon. What do you want? You don't want money? What do you want? I want to be with you in this moment. But my wife is going to be home soon. Soon as relative. Soon as any minute. Soon as any minute I choose. She's a sacred heart down the block. She's always been very devoted to you. This would be a terrible shock, though, if she came and... Would you like something to eat? What do you suggest? Well, how about an apple? Good. I'd like an apple. Okay, I'll get an apple. Oh, 
Would you like a piece of whitefish? No, thank you. You know, I tried to get Maria to like whitefish, but she's Italian. I don't think Italians like whitefish. Thank you very much, man. You're welcome. Mm. I do good work, if I do say so myself. Yeah. Say, how do you make an apple? Well, apples in general or any one apple? Well, any apple. Uh -huh. Oh. Once you've made one apple, you can always make another. Yeah, but when you make all apples, they're all different. You see, if I was to make an apple that turned out to be a great apple, I would make them all the same way. Well, if I made apples all the same way, that would be boring. And I do not create boredom, Max. Yeah, but you're always get a lot of bad apples. Oh, you can't expect me to ponder the fate of every single apple that grows. As fantastic as my mind is, as complex, as awe-inspiring, even to me, I don't say, well, now, I'm going to make this one a very beautiful apple, and that one there I'll put a brown spot or two, and oh, no, I couldn't do that, Max. I'll be spending all my time with apples. Yeah. And you realize how many apples there are in the world? Oh, I never counted them. I see, there must be millions. Of course. Not to mention peaches and pears and grapes. They come in bunches, Max. Yeah. Bunches! Hold everything! I'm terribly sorry, Max. Oh, it's all right. What was I saying? Oh, yes. Uh, um... You see, I start with an idea for something. Uh -huh. This apple, for an example, that's an idea. I see how it goes. If it's a good idea, I go along with it. Yeah. I develop it, I alter it. I may change it altogether or destroy it and start with something else. Uh, but right now, the apple's a hot idea. At the moment, I'm very pleased with apples. Yeah. They're pretty and they taste good. Yeah, they look good, too. Max? Yeah. What's wrong? You don't like apples? Sure, sure, I have apples. Apples are terrific. Who wouldn't like an apple? That's good. I want you to enjoy the fruits of my labor. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. Of course, you understand that apples are only a small part of a much greater idea, a much more complex notion. Mm -hmm. What could be more complex than an apple? Life itself. Life? Oh, sure. sure. Life? Yeah. Living, breathing life, Max. Yeah, there's no question about it. Life is a very big thing. Max, life is my triumph. Yeah, you haven't lived until you've lived. Exactly. It took me a, an eternity to come up with it. You understand, of course, that first I had to create a proper setting for it. A setting? A place for it to exist. Mm -hmm. I started with nothing. Absolutely nothing, you understand. Yeah, I remember. I read that in the Bible. Nothing! A perfect void! Yeah, nothing. No stars, no moon. Max, I created the entire universe. The moon. Do you realize how many moons there are? More than apples? Of course more than apples. More than grapes? Well, you know, moons don't come in bunches. Oh, maybe you're right. No, of course, there are more grapes than there are moons. Well, the moon was just an afterthought, you know, the bell in the church. Yeah, the sugar and the oatmeal. If you must. Mm. You see, Max, I never intended putting life on the moon. Oh, no, no, no. Once I created the Earth, I knew that this was the perfect setting. A thousand moons aren't worth one Earth. You've seen pictures of the moon. Yeah, but once you see the Earth, the moon is nothing. No, Max, it's not nothing. All right, but the Earth, it isn't. No, as you say. Max, what? I love the Earth. Yeah? You hear? Beautiful. Yes, you see, this was the perfect setting. Yeah, the Earth. This was the place. This was the place. The one place in all the universe where everything came together in one smashing triumph. The Earth. The perfect setting. Trees blossomed here and grass flourished. The sun was just warm enough, the nights just cool enough, the water just sweet enough. Earth! Mm. Perfecto! Perfecto, huh? Mm. Yeah. Why don't you sit down? Excuse me, God, but maybe you haven't noticed. Uh, we don't see the sun so good here. And the grass and the trees, well, maybe in the park, you know, about two blocks away from here in the corner, you know, you can see it from the roof. And the nights get terribly cold. It's terrible. It's about 8 or 9 o'clock, they turn off the furnace. You know, we got no heat. And the water, forget it, brown, tastes just like iodine. No, God. The earth may be great in some places, but in other places, life needs a better setting. Well, Max, you can give a man a beautiful apartment and he can decorate it so badly that it becomes an atrocity. Yeah, but the, the Bronx was already decorated before I got here. And I don't have a spare 50, 60 billion dollars to change the furnishings. I got nothing to say about the decorations. With you, it's different. You got to say. You don't like something? Well, poof, a flood, and zip, zip, you start all over again. No, no, no. I've done that already, Max. 
I can't keep flooding. I can't keep erasing. Why not? I don't want to be arbitrary. Life is much too important an idea. You don't doubt that for a moment, do you, Max? Well, if you've got a good life, it's an idea. But I don't have such a good life. And frankly, I don't know anybody else around who's got such a good life. Look what I have to do. I have to put bars on the windows. Yeah. I give man the gift of life. What he does with it is for him to decide. Yeah, like an apple. You make an apple, a lot of apples, only some got brown spots because you can't pay attention to all the apples. Man is not an apple. If an apple's got a brown spot, you let it rot. Man, what? You can't let him rot. Well, maybe you're right, but an apple is a much more simple idea. An apple is born and grows tied to its place, bound to the fate of all the other apples on the tree. Man is much more complex. He's not bound to anything. He's free to move around as he pleases. What? Free? You can move around freely. I'm too old, for one thing. And besides, I ain't got any money. You try moving around oh, without oh, any money. Oh, come on, Max. You're like every other man. You have choices. What choices? Choices you've always had. You want to see the sun? Go and look at the sun. You don't need money to see the sun. With all my life, I wanted to see the sun. But I had to earn a living. I was a tailor. Tailors don't see the sun much. Well, if the sun was that important to you, you didn't have to become a tailor. Or you could have become a tailor in a sunny place. My father was a tailor. His father was a tailor. So if your father was a thief and his father before him a thief, would you have had to become a thief as well? Now, I don't mean to be facetious, Max. But along with life, I gave man the most important, important of gifts. What was that? Intelligence, imagination. Look, the ant is free to move around, right? He has will and determination. So unlike the apple, he's not bound to the fate of the tree he grows on. Man is much more important than an ant. He's free to choose where he wants to live and to choose how he wants to make his living and who he wants to love. So why doesn't every man live like a king? Why do they have to live in holes? Why should I have to live in this terrible place? These walls, they shut me off. They, they close me no, out. No, 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 Max. These are not the walls you've built, not the walls of this apartment. No, no, no. The walls you've built are in your mind. Yeah. They do surround your imagination, close you off, wall you up. Max, if you wanted to, you could walk out of here right now and leave the walls of this apartment behind you forever. Yeah, I would love to do yes, that. Yes, but if you can't break down the walls in your mind, you'd soon find another place just like this and then another the same. And finally, you'd find a place smaller, colder, where the sun cannot reach and from which you cannot escape. Lord, what do you want from me? Why do you come to me now? I'm 66 years old. Doesn't it seem a little late? It's never too late, Max. This life that you put around me, I've seen too much of it. These people you keep talking about, these living, breathing people, they're not so hot. Uh, maybe you should make more visits. Do you realize how many people there are on Earth? Uh, must be more than grapes. Well, no, not more than grapes. Must be more than moons? Uh, no, not more than moons. Well, how about apples? No, not more than apples either. Well, there must be some. I'll try to make more visits. But still, there are an awful lot of people to see, Max, and I need help. Help? God needs help? Yes. What about the angels? Angels, they're fine. They're company. They look after little children. They sing. They fly around. Yeah, they're very entertaining. Yes, they are. And if you've got a really big job, they can give you a hand with it. But for the everyday nitty-gritty of help, no, no, no. For that, I have to come to people, Max. Good people. Well, Lord, you know, I married Maria. A lovely Catholic church-going lady. Yes, she is. Warm and generous. Yeah. My father nearly had a heart attack. Your father's heart was always sound. Yeah, you should have seen him when I gave him the good news. Gagging with the eyes popping You've out. You've never of forgiven him, and he was only looking out for your own good. Now, why not? He used to, when we were kids, he used to make our life miserable. Well, with what information he had, he tried to do his best. Uh, maybe you should have visited him more often. Well, I'm sorry, but if it's any comfort to you, I do see him now, you know. You do? Oh, yes. Oh, oh so he made it. Yes, he made it. All his life, he tried to be a loving man. Really? Really. He did? He, uh, well, I guess that's all it takes to make it. Huh? That's the most important part, in my opinion. Yeah, but that's an opinion. Well, after all, my opinion. I'm infallible. Yeah. <sighs> well, do you think I'll... God? In here, Max.
Will I make it? Not yet. Not yet, Max. Not yet. Why? Are you ready to give it all up? Well, by all you mean uh, everything? No, no. I wouldn't want to leave Maria. No, of course not. And she wouldn't want to leave you either. Because we love each other very much. Ah, yes. So you see, you are, after all, a very fortunate man. Fortunate? Sit down, Max. You see, you've let your whole life happen to you. You've let situations choose your roads for you, and you swallowed hard as you traveled down those roads and believe you learned to live with those choices. And all the while, you became bitter, more closed, more defensive. The one choice you ever made for yourself was to marry someone you loved. And because you made that choice, you made it work. And that's why I've come to you today. Oh, I don't understand. I need your help, Max. You, you need my help? Yes. Why? Because I, I married Maria? Because you made love work. When it became difficult, you never backed off. When all the other things you never chose walled you off, you never once turned your back on your love. Ah, don't you see, Max? You have learned what love is. Life is, after all, very difficult. The gift doesn't come with a money-back guarantee. And in surmounting its difficulties, very few have learned what you have learned. No God carried a handkerchief. Your watch is working again. Mr. Abram? Well, what are you doing up there, Willie? Get off of the fire escape, you'll kill yourself. Uh, this kid, always up and down the fire escape like a little rat. Mother leaves him alone all day long. Runs wild. Is Mrs. Abrams in? No, oh, she's at church, Willie. Well, they should put him in the home. You know, my wife has to go down there every ten minutes. It's pathetic. Mr. Abrams, please. My mother's very sick, I think. She's just lying there. I can't get her up. What do you mean you can't get her up? I thought she was asleep. All right, so she's asleep. She'll get up, don't worry. Mr. Abrams? What? I think she's dead. She is dead, man. You, you knew this all the time, didn't you? All right, Willie. Don't move. I'm coming. I'll open the window right away. home in a few minutes, then we'll see what's what. You hungry? Huh? Would you like an apple? I got one left. Oh, better yet. How about some warm milk? Tell you what, you get the pot, I'll get the milk. Left him five hundred and forty-two dollars. And the pin and the ring. Five hundred and forty-two dollars. Well, you can't save a million dollars scrubbing floors. Where does a person like this get a six-year-old boy? Well, uh, he wasn't always six years old once he was a baby. So where does a person like this get a baby? Max, where does a baby? There's a woman and there's a man. Unless there's some kind of store that ain't in the neighborhood anymore. But who would marry a woman like this? I don't think anybody ever did. 
She wouldn't put her name to anything. That's what she told me. But somewhere, somehow, she must have gotten close to somebody, you know. It's made even just for one night. All right, maybe it was dark and she was asleep. Oh, Max, you don't sleep through something like that. Yeah. Max, mm. loving cures many diseases, even fear. Yeah, but Anna, how could she? She didn't love the boy. If she did, she wouldn't let him run around like that. I don't think she cared anything about him. He's always in the fire escape, behind the garbage pails like a rat in the de alleys. What could she do? She had to earn a living, so she scrubbed floors. Hey, she saved $542. Who was it for herself? No. It was for William. Yeah. Everything was for William. Yeah, I guess so. You know, she knew she was sick. She gave me the keys to the vault weeks ago. Yeah, all right, big deal. Where's he going to go with $542? I'll tell you where. Nowhere. That's where he's going to go. Because first they put him in a home, and then after a while he's out on the street with his $542, and finally takes a room someplace in the Bronx with bars behind the windows, and no sun, and no grass, and no trees, and... Ah! <sighs> she didn't have any relatives? No. I guess she was too scared to have a relative. Oh, Max. But there's a boy in there. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? He's a very sweet boy. Yeah, he's got a nice face, too, once you clean it up. And fearless. Jumps around like a kangaroo, swings from the fire escape like a monkey. Ah. Max. Mm. We're old people. We're not so old. We're old. We're not old. How much money we got in the bank? Max, we're too old. How much? Two thousand dollars or a little more. Okay. What's okay? How much do you think Maurice would give me for my share of the tailor shop? Max. I own 25% of a very good tailor shop. Max, the Social Security isn't enough. We need that little bit extra we get from... From the shop. For what? So we can live here? Must be someplace better than here. Maria, somewhere, someplace, there's got to be better than here. And if we're thinking of that little boy in there at all. But, but you, you don't like kids, Max. Who said I don't like kids? How do I know I don't like kids? I never had any. But, but when we could have adopted them, you didn't want any. $5,000 Maurice would pay to have me out of the shop, right? Yes, $5,000 would pay. Why? Because I don't work there anymore. I don't do him any good, I don't do myself any good, I don't do anybody any good. And I want to do somebody some good. Yeah, $5,000, he would pay it, I'm sure. Don't you think so? He might. The boy shouldn't have to live here and, 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 like a rat in the garbage pails in the alleys and the fire escapes there. He shouldn't know fear if he doesn't have to. He shouldn't have to grow up like his mother. Maria, he shouldn't have to live in Bronx was not the setting that God had in mind. God, Max, you funny man. God doesn't wear a white suit and a cap. That's what I said, too. But when I walked over to that window and I looked out and I saw everything was standing still there like a picture, I said to myself, this is not Bing Crosby. But God doesn't drop in through a window, Max. You were in church. Did you see him? <laughs> no. No, because he was here with me. Max. You want to see a doctor, you go to his office. You want to see God, you go to his office. All right, so obviously made a house call because he was here with me. You know, he said you had a lovely soul. He was sitting right there in the kitchen, eating an apple. Maria, we'll get out of here. We'll get out of here somewhere, someplace we'll go. Where will we go? What's the difference where we'll go? We'll go somewhere where there's air, where there's sun. This house is not a tree. We're not stuck here like apples. Yes, I'll speak to Maurice in the morning. But Max, I you... tell you that four days ago, I couldn't ever have imagined leaving the Bronx. But suddenly, inside my bedroom is a little boy, and my heart's a completely different feeling. Max, you're 66 years old. You're retired. How... All of a sudden, you feel like a father. Well, yeah, I'm old, but I'm not, thank God, senile. I'm tired of going down the same old road and dragging you with me. Look where it's led us, to this place behind bars. But, but a father? 
I hear there's a trumpet blowing in my ear and in my head the walls are tumbling down and suddenly from behind those walls is peaking an imagination. Max, you can't let your imagination run away with you. It's not running yet. It's just peaking. Peaking? Peaking at what? At a better life. Maria, I'm not going to sit around here waiting to die. I want to be out. I want to be doing with thinking and breathing. Max, you're old and with age comes wisdom and a little healthy fear. My face may be old, my body may be old, but my imagination, oh, that's no more. And that is what is giving me the courage. of Catholic priests who seek to share the good news of God's love with all their brothers and sisters in the human family.